Hello, and welcome to the first video of this tutorial series. If you're looking to hardware debug your Intel CPU and management engine, unlock undocumented instructions, and execute arbitrary microcode, then stay tuned for the rest of the videos in the series. In this introductory video, I'll explain some of the topics that I'll be going over in the future uploads, and talk about the motivation behind this research. Now let's get into it. So if you haven't heard by now, back in 2017, Intel released an advisory covering a whole collection of bugs in their management engine firmware. And as you can see in the advisory, there's a lot of products affected by these vulnerabilities. The bug that we'll focus on allows for arbitrary execution in the trusted execution engine. I'll use the term management engine interchangeably, even though it's not completely accurate. This is one of those initial breakthroughs that has allowed normal researchers the ability to examine unexploited areas of Intel firmware. Because of this and other reasons we'll get into, this means we'll be specifically focusing on the Intel Atom E3900 series. A lot of this is applicable to other platforms, and I'll delve into that towards the end of the series, but just note that the specific walkthroughs will require you to have this model. Particularly, I'll be using the UpSquared, a maker board that comes with an Atom E3950. You could try the Celeron version, but just know that I haven't finished testing on this platform yet. Interestingly though, this is the processor originally used in the public proof of concept, but I use the Atom because I can build the firmware more easily for that. Speaking of proof of concept, I should definitely mention that most of my knowledge in this area is built on the research from three very smart guys who have been nice enough to share their ideas with the public. I'll refer to them as the Red Pill team. Most of my learning on this topic has actually come from reading their Twitter, presentations, and their GitHub code. I'll be referencing several of their repositories to perform the exploit on the trusted execution engine. This will allow us to activate what is called red unlocking of the system. After unlocking, we can use special control registers to read and write microcode. We can also disassemble the microcode to understand what to patch. After that, we can unlock the undocumented instructions and use that to do similar forensics. And we can even tell our processor to execute arbitrary microcode instructions by specifying any address we want. In the example I showed on screen earlier, I was executing the debug write instruction as seen with the two zero F bytes. RCX contains D8, meaning we want to execute arbitrary microcode. RAX contains the address where we want to start. I've pointed that at 4794 in the microcode ROM. This is part of the CPU ID routine that returns the processor brand string. After stepping over this macro instruction, we can see that RBX, RCX, and RDX are updated to the values we expect. Before we even get to unlocking our processor though, I'll talk about how to get your initial debugging setup working and how to do this via your firmware. We'll be using the Intel hardware debugging feature known as DCI, or Direct Connect Interface. Now there's already a few resources explaining how to do this, so this part won't be too long. So if this research has been done, why am I creating this tutorial series? Well, most of the blogs talk about using it for specific purposes like memory forensics, debugging SMM exploits, and just general curiosity. No other researchers other than this one blog seem to have attempted any of the chip red pill techniques and their main focus was porting it to another platform, not for modifying microcode. Apart from myself and the microcode research team on GitHub, I'm not aware of anyone who has completed or even attempted to replicate their entire research. Publicly, that is. This is probably because I found that their instructions and proof of concept code are not 100% clear on what to do all the time. There's a lot of pitfalls, gotchas, weird behaviors, and even some bugs in the concept code. Through painstaking trial and error, I figured out how to get through each step, and I'll definitely explain all those same mistakes I made. I'll do it this way so you can learn and actually understand what's going on at each step instead of just copying and pasting scripts. My goal is to help get more people to the place where I am so we can perform further research into microcode and hopefully make more sense of what we can do from there. Apart from just explaining the exact steps I did, I'll give you some background information and point to a number of good resources that can help you learn individual topics. So, to recap, I'll be creating a series of tutorials, roughly in this order. First, I'll talk about how to build your own firmware image, targeting the Intel Atom E3950. This will let us configure the firmware however we want. After that, I'll go over the multiple ways of flashing that firmware onto your device and some general tips behind that. If you're using a device where you can't use custom firmware, I'll discuss how to read and modify the existing firmware to similarly unlock debugging features. Using our modified firmware, we will enable DCI and perform hardware single-stepping and debugging. I'll go over how to interact with your device using Intel System Studio. Once we can debug our platform reliably, I'll finally get into how to perform the management engine exploit. There's a lot of specifics that I need to explain in detail here. 
But once we are done, we should be able to debug the management engine itself and confirm that we've achieved red unlock. This three here confirms that we have red unlock activated. After that, I'll talk about the CR bus and LDAT scripts and the interesting information we can get from those. Using them, we'll dump the microcode from our device. Here you can see the contents of the match patch registers, the patch constants, and the microcode patch RAM. With the microcode dumped, we'll use the disassembler to read it into a more understandable format. This will also help us learn how to write it for the future. We'll use the same CR bus scripts to overwrite some of the microcode arrays. We'll confirm that this worked using the same method that the red pill team used. We'll patch the microcode that returns the processor branch string, which gets set into registers when a specific CPU ID leaf is called. Once we confirmed that a microcode patch works, we will enable two undocumented instructions known as patch2 and patch3, or sometimes known as debug read and debug write. These can do things like read and write to the control register bus, system agent registers, and microcode RAM. But my favorite thing is using the debug write instruction to tell our processor to execute arbitrary microcode, as we saw before. In this second experiment here, I simply changed the microcode entry point to be one address later, at 4795 now. When I viewed the contents of the registers after the debug write, I confirmed that the RBX register did not change because I skipped that part in the micro instructions. And after that, you'll pretty much be caught up with everything that I currently know. We can discuss where to take it from there. We could experiment with microcode instructions or figure out what CR bus registers and LDAP ports map to what functionality. Perhaps we can find some microarchitectural data sources to help debug or discover speculative execution attacks. Or maybe we can just simply uncover more Intel secrets. The Chip Red Pill team has a list of unresolved questions I would love to explore with you. And I have my own list of unresolved questions as well. So if you're interested in learning about this kind of stuff, please drop a like or comment on this video. I'm really curious to see how many people are interested since I know this is going to be a very niche topic. I haven't recorded yet, so the more likes I get, the more effort I'll probably put into the videos. Or maybe I'll make a blog to go along with it too. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm really looking forward to getting these tutorials out, so stay tuned until the next video.